Consider a typical curbside recycling program in which households dispersed across well, uh, dispersed locations bring out a valued resource uh, and through a linear system, trucks go and pick it up, collect it, and deposit it at a centralized location where it's turned into something valuable. Now, imagine this in reverse, whereby instead of a recycling depot, we have the Mississippi River, and instead of trucks picking up the resource, we have dredging barges going around, excavating sediment from the bottom of the river, capturing it in barges, and then bringing it along the river and dispersing it in various locations for the creation of marsh and the restoration of coastal Louisiana. And this is the proposal I'd like to make today. Um, the beneficial use of dredge sediment, if you will, a different type of grit uh, for, for coastal restoration, <laughs> or lots of mud persistently. But before I get into this, I want to make sure everyone understands on how the Mississippi River Delta A Plain, on which you are on right now, how it formed and why it is existentially threatened. It is sinking, it is eroding, and this city is in trouble for the later part of this century. So let's go back 20,000 years. At that time, this area would have been in the Gulf of Mexico, and vast ice sheets covered the, the northern half of the North American continent. Global temperatures start to warm, and as they do, they release vast quantities of sediment-laden water down the Mississippi Valley, plunging into the Gulf of Mexico. The sediment gets deposited in a series of deltaic lo uh, of, of lobes, and in a period of only 7,000 years, the L Mississippi deltaic plain rises from the Gulf of Mexico by the forces of an uncontrolled river moving back, back and forth, creating land. Now, quite naturally, as we establish a society here, we couldn't quite live with this completely uncontrolled river. And so, quite understandably, we controlled it by imposing levees and control structures to lock it into its channel, and frankly, that enabled the society we have today. But what it also did it was it prevented that seasonal deposition of the two resources that deltas need critically, fresh water and sediment, even as longshore currents continued to eat away at the edges, even as, in order to make the port more efficient, we excavated a series of navigation canals, 10,000 miles of oil and gas canals, and as a result, everything that you see in this image right here in red has disappeared from the Louisiana surface uh, 2,000 square miles in the period of 70 years. Everything in green is either or both sinking and eroding. Everything in blue is rising by as much as four feet in the 21st century. The yellow is the human distribution, and you are here. <laughs> so what to do? Well, technique number one, is river diversion, strategically opening up the river in certain areas with gates and through gravity allowing a portion of the river water to flow across the wetland, pushing back the salt water wedge with, with fresh water and creating new land. But there's a big shortfall with, set, with uh, river diversions. Because of all these dams that we've created on the Missouri and the western tributaries, we only have a fraction of the sediment in the suspended load needed for this land creation. The rest of it is tumbling along the bottom, it's bed load, and it gets deposited either at the bottom or in the Gulf of Mexico. Um, so river diversions are sufficiently persistent. The water is constantly flowing through, there's, there's no pumps or anything, and that's good, but they're insufficiently muddy. Technique number two is called sediment siphoning whereby a specific barge with a dredge excavates a sediment from the bottom of the river, a pipeline is placed, and the sediment is poured right into the eroding marshes. So uh, these are um, already in place. There's a number of these, and they're great in that they really do create land quickly because they're sufficiently muddy, as you can see at the bottom there, but when the project is over, there's no more sediment, there's no more water coming through. They're insufficiently persistent. So how do we get the best of both worlds here? And so my proposal is the beneficial use of dredge sediments. We dredge all the time anyway. It's called maintenance dredging. And we have to keep doing so because that sediment is running along the bed load we have to keep the river deep enough for these huge containerized vessels to arrive here to keep the port healthy uh, and to keep your laptops and your iPads arriving when you order them in Amazon. We're going to have to dig even deeper 
after the Panama Canal is widened and these so-called post-Panamax supercontainer ships will be coming up the Mississippi and all other American and world ports, we have to excavate the river from a, a draft of 45 down to 50 feet. So what a great opportunity. What are we going to do with all this sediment? Um, so we dredge all the time for navigation reasons. We're going to be dredging deeper and more frequently for this capital projects of deepening for the Panama Canal. We desperately need the sediment we're dredging, but what are we doing it with it right now? Because of an Army Corps uh, a policy, contract, dredging contractors are required to get rid of this, this muck, this junk, as cost effectively as possible. And incredibly, what this means is they simply release it into the water column and let it flow out uselessly into the Gulf of Mexico, even as it's surrounded by the fastest sinking and eroding place on the North American continent. So the, the project here is to proceed with already in place projects of creating new river diversions as well as sediment siphons. These are all the currently planned projects but then go further and install a series of bins in front of them. Remember the recycling program in, in reverse. And then change the policies such that dredging contractors are able to take ownership of all the dredged sediments that they, uh, that they excavate. So um, now they could capture it in a series of hopper bar barges uh, and because they now own it, they could bring it to the nearest bins constantly moving back and forth where they would be able to sell it at a per ton basis to state and federal officials at a rate cheaper than if the, than the, uh, those officials would find it from an alternative source, which by the way, are few and far between. So what this does is it turns a liability into an asset it positions it where we need it most, these eroding marshes closest in to the um, metropolitan area. The fixed costs are really just limited to those hopper barges and the bins plus a little bit of maintenance. It deploys the private sector in the public interest and for the environment at the very time that we're about to be excavating a whole bunch of more sediment from the bottom of the river and we desperately need it because sea level is rising at a pace that without this we simply don't have enough sediment to keep a pace of that. Um, and so just like our recycling system in reverse, we'd have these bins stationed up and down and barges going back and forth just like the trucks in reverse, but instead of collecting, they'll be depositing this valuable resource at all these bins and getting them to where they're needed in a persistent sort of way. Lots of mud persistently. And I'll wrap up there. Thanks a lot. Hey. <clears throat>